Hi, and welcome to the uh, extra slides on statics that I'll be going through in this video. Uh, we'll start by doing an example problem, a box on an incline. And we have a scenario where three boxes are placed on identical inclines. Friction prevents them from sliding. The boxes are non-uniform, so their center of masses are in different locations indicated by the blue dots in each case. In which case does the box tip over? Either A in all three cases, B in two and three, or C in three only. I'll give you a second or two to think about that. Okay, hit pause if you need more time. The answer is C, uh, three only. And the reason for that is our, our pivot point that this would tip over on is uh, this corner right here in all three cases. And in cases one and cases two, the weight of the center of mass uh, is to the left of that pivot point, uh, and it will be applying a torque counterclockwise, whereas in case three, the weight from the center of mass is past the edge of the block, and there will be a clockwise torque about this pivot point, and no normal force on this side to oppose it, and therefore it will tip over. Let's do another problem. In this example, we have a person climbing a ladder, and we want to understand the relationships to make that a stable configuration. The person has a mass of capital M, the ladder has a mass of lowercase m, uh, and a length of L, and it's leaning against a smooth wall. The frictional force between the floor and the ladder keeps it from slipping, and the angle between the ladder and wall is phi. We want to determine how the magnitude of the friction force depends on phi. Now, uh, this is a smooth wall, so we're going to neglect friction on the wall. We're going to assume that the, um, that the ladder can slip perfectly on, along this wall, uh, so there's nothing other than the normal force supporting this ladder. What keeps the ladder from sliding, of course, is the friction floor on the ground here, uh, the frictional force on the ground here, and as long as this is a static case, that frictional force will be static friction, at some point, uh, the, the forces may be such that the static friction is not enough to hold this ladder in place, and that's exactly what we want to understand here. So, uh, we can write the weight of this person as their mass, capital M times G, and it's located at some height D up the ladder. The uh, um, weight of the ladder itself is lowercase mg and is placed, that weight vector is placed at its center of mass. We have the normal force of the ground uh, pushing up against the ladder, which is touching the ground at this point. We have the normal force of the wall, which is pushing away from the wall against the ladder, which is touching at this upper corner. And we have the frictional force, which is pushing to the right uh, to hold the ladder from sliding to the left. Now, this is a statics problem, so that means that the sum of the forces is equal to zero. That means the sum of the x components of the forces is equal to zero. It means this, the sum of the y components is equal to zero. And of course, the other condition in statics is that the sum of the torques is equal to zero. And not only is it true that the sum of the torques is equal to zero, but it has to be the case that the sum of the torques is equal to zero at all possible pivot points. At any pivot point I choose, the torques have to be zero, because if there was a pivot point where the torques were not equal to zero, then you would have a rotation about that particular pivot point, and this is the static case. Um, now we can write the equation for the forces in the x direction. We have the normal force, which is pushing to the left, and uh, F sub S, which is pushing to the right, so F sub S minus N2 is equal to zero. In the Y direction, we have that the normal force pushing up um, is uh, equal and opposite to the weight of the person in the ladder, so N1 minus capital MG minus lowercase mg has to add up to zero. And now, for calculating the torques, we can choose any pivot we would like. We're going to find the torque about point C, um, and th um, that's going to be um, capital MGD sine phi um, plus MGL over 2 sine phi. So these are both trying to rotate, these, these are both in the clockwise direction um, with respect to this pivot point C. And of course we have to use sine phi to give us the component that is perpendicular to this, uh, the radial distance from C. 
And then um, going in the counterclockwise direction is N2. Um, and since N2 is perpendicular to these vectors, uh, we have a, a cosine phi rather than a sine phi. Um, and since it's pushing in the opposite rotational direction, the, the torque has an opposite sign. So capital MGD sine theta plus lowercase mgd um, mgl over 2 sine phi minus n2l cosine phi equals 0. And that is our torque expression. And the reason why of all possible pivots, which we could have chosen, we could have chosen any pivot. We could have made the center of mass the ladder be our pivot. We could have made uh, this upper corner be our pivot. We chose C because we have two forces here that will apply no torques if they're um, being applied at the pivot point because their radial distance from the pivot point is zero. And so we're able to cancel out two forces, which makes the expression a little bit simpler. Now, uh, we can rewrite the second equation for the sum of the forces Fy uh, as just N1 equals, and we add the other two terms over the other side, capital M plus lowercase m quantity times G. Um, we also have the sum of the torques, uh, which we're rewriting from up here. Um, MGD sine phi plus MGL over 2 sine phi minus, and we're going to substitute instead of N2, we're going to substitute F sub S because this first equation uh, tells us that F sub S equals N2. So we're just plugging that into there. We're substituting and we're write, rewriting the torque equation. Um, so there are those two equations again. Now we can solve for F sub S in this second equation and we end up getting MGD sine phi plus MGL over 2 sine phi and then we divide it over this L cosine phi and we can simplify it since we know that sine over cosine gives us a tangent. We get D over L plus lowercase m over 2 capital M parentheses times capital MG tan theta equals F sub S. Um, now, that is the expression that relates this angle phi uh, to our friction, um, but our static friction will get bigger and bigger and bigger for larger and larger phi up until the point where we break static friction. And that point is the uh, FFS max, the uh, maximum static friction, which is mu s times n1. And you'll recall from uh, the previous slides that n1 is equal to m plus mg. So mu s m plus mg. Uh, is equal to our F sub max. And so our condition is that uh, this expression has to be less than or equal to mu sub s um, m plus mg. If it exceeds that value, then the static friction is broken and this ladder will slide and the person will fall. Uh, be careful when you're working with ladders. The, the, the state that we want this ladder to be in to be stable is we want to keep uh, phi small um, because if phi gets larger, then tan phi gets larger. Uh, this term gets larger and eventually it exceeds the static friction condition. You need more friction also as you go up the ladder. Um, as this person goes higher on the ladder, D over L gets larger, which makes this side of the inequality larger, uh, which may eventually uh, break the conditions of the, the static friction. Another example is a yo-yo where you're applying uh, force on a string. There's a tension uh, going up diagonally. Uh, with an angle phi with respect to uh, level ground. Uh, the inner radius, uh, the, the spool of the uh, yo-yo has a radius of lowercase r and the yo-yo itself has a radius of capital R. Uh, we've got mg, the weight of the yo-yo, pulling down on its center of mass, which is at the center of the yo-yo. Um, and then we've got the normal force pushing up. Um, and then we've got friction, which is uh, uh, frictional forces to the left uh, working against uh, the uh, x component of the tension which is working to the right. Now if t cosine phi equals the frictional force and n plus t sine phi equals mg uh, then we have a balancing of all of the linear forces, the x and y components of all of the forces. So that's basically saying that the x component of the tension balances the friction and if uh, mg plus the y component of t plus n um, cancel each other out. Uh, then we have no net force on the yo-yo, which means that the yo-yo will either be stationary or moving at a constant velocity. But the interesting case is where if the uh, tension is pulling up along a line that points directly down to the contact point, uh, 
then there will be no torque about that contact point. And therefore, uh, V will either will be constant or zero, uh, but omega will, will certainly be zero. Um, so omega will be zero. V is not required to be zero, but it will be at least constant since there's no net force. Let's do a top hat problem that we didn't get a chance to do in class, a hanging sign. Can this beam with a sign hanging from it be stable? Yes, no, it depends on the value of x, d, it depends on whether or not the beam has mass. I'll give you a second to think about it. Please pause if you would like more time. Uh, the answer is no, it cannot be stable. Um, we have the weight of the sign pushing down. We have the weight of the rod at its center of mass pushing down. Uh, and then we have um, F sub Y pushing up and F sub X uh, pushing to the right. Um, F sub X equals zero. Um, F sub Y, in order to balance the forces in the Y direction, has to equal W1 plus W2. Um, but then that would mean that there is only a counterclockwise torque about the left end, and therefore um, it is not a stable situation. Let's do a few more examples. Let's do another hanging sign. Uh, this time we have a support cable, um, and uh, it's coming in at uh, L over 2. Let's identify the forces acting on the rod. Uh, well, we have the, the weight acting downward. We have F sub Y, F sub X, and we have the tension, which is kind of going um, back into the left at an angle. Uh, if we apply the equilibrium conditions, the X value of the forces has to balance. So F sub X minus um, T cosine um, theta has to equal zero. So the tension has an X component that's going uh, to the left, and there's a normal force of the wall pushing to the right to balance it. In the Y direction, we have um, the uh, force uh, pushing upward, the, the, the frictional force pushing upward. Uh, we also have the tension, which is an upward component, and then the weight of the sign uh, pulling downward. And then um, for the torque, we have the weight of the sign pulling downward, and we have T sine theta L over 2 pulling upward where we're taking the pivot uh, to be the, the point along the wall. Um, note that in this problem I didn't say it, but we're assuming the rod here to be massless. Uh, it's just the mass of the sign. Um, so if we solve for F sub X, F sub Y, and T, we get that uh, T equals 2W over sine theta, and that's the condition um, that is derived from the torque equation. Um, we have that F sub X equals T cosine theta, which we can now substitute this uh, value for T, and we get 2W over sine theta cosine theta. And we have that negative W um, plus T sine theta, and since uh, T equals 2W over sine theta, uh, t sine theta equals 2w, so we get a 2w minus w, and we get 1w, and if we bring it over, we get that fy equals negative w. Uh, the wall exerts a downward force on the rod. Now uh, let's do an example with a moving fridge. A truck carries a refrigerator of mass m on a horizontal road. The center of mass of the fridge is at a height h from the bed of the truck. Um, and a width, the width of the fridge is 2D. What is the maximum acceleration that the truck can have without tipping the fridge? Assume static friction between the truck and fridge is large enough for the fridge to not slip. So we're not going to be breaking the static friction condition, uh, but we are going to be accelerating to the point where the fridge might tip over. So when the truck has no acceleration or is at rest, the normal force is right below the center of mass. Uh, and then when we put in the equations for a static situation, we have that the sum of the y components of the force is add up to zero. The normal force equals mg. 
And of course, the sum of the torques is trivially zero uh, because the torques are acting um, along the axis um, of, of the pivot. When the truck has some acceleration to the left, the normal force moves to the right to produce enough torque to cancel out the torque due to friction. So we have uh, the acceleration is going this way, we have the normal force, and we have the frictional force. Um, but now um, the normal force has to, to move to the right in order to balance out the torque that the frictional force is applying with respect to uh, the center of mass. The pressure on the ground is redistributed. Um, this is something that you should expect based on your own intuition. If you've ever been on a bus when it accelerates, um, and you know you can imagine you're standing, let's say uh, we're looking at your back and you've got your, your left and your right foot. Um, as the bus starts to move uh, to, the, to the left, your right foot is suddenly going to feel you kind of taking up more of the force. This is also um, similar to the case of a plank resting on two points. The, 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 the weight is redistributed between the two points based on where that plank is, even though the sum of the, the two points is equal to the total weight of the plank. So in this case, we can write out that uh, F of X is MA. Um, that's the acceleration of this fridge. Um, F sub S, small f for friction, is equal to MA. Um, F sub y has to be equal to zero. So we still have that n equals mg. Uh, and the torque is equal to zero. But we now have that the, um, the T sub F, um, so the, the torque due to the friction about the center of mass, minus the torque due to the normal force has to equal zero. When the fridge is just starting to tip over, the normal acts precisely on the bottom edge. And it's, this is the point where the normal can't go any further. Um, and so we have, again, F sub X equals MA, and friction is equal to capital MA. Uh, again, uh, F sub Y, the sum of all of the Y components, is equal to zero. And therefore, the, we have the, the normal is equal to MG. Now when we write the expression for um, tau F minus tau N, we have that uh, tau F, uh, is equal to the friction times h, the, the friction times the, um, the, the height uh, away from the pivot point, minus nd, the normal force, is being applied at a distance d um, from the pivot point, which we're using the center of mass, and that has to be equal to zero. Um, and we can write substituting for F sub S, M A um, H, um, and minus M G D for the normal force, and that has to be equal to zero. And so we get that uh, A sub M, the acceleration at which this is just about to tip, is D over H times G, and if it goes any faster than that speed, uh, then we will have a net torque and we will tip over. So the fridge tips over when the normal force cannot produce a torque ND that is larger than F sub SH.